This time a racist social media post has landed someone in trouble. It seems people aren't learning any lessons from the likes of Vicky Momberg and Penny Sparrow, remember them? Well, they've both been through court processes over their hateful rants. Well, Emma Sadler from the digital law company joins us now to talk about what actually happens now. Emma, good morning and thanks for your time. I mean, we've heard all the criticism, we've heard the anger, we've heard the, the sentiment, the negative sentiment uh, expressed against Adam uh, Katsavello. So I suppose the question is why? after everything that we've seen coming up in the past two years or so, starting with, with Penny Sparrow, would someone do this? Well, I think it's incredibly stupid. I think the first remark is that I don't think that he intended for this to land up on mm. social media. Mm. And I think, if anything, it highlights the power of digital content. You know, yeah. when I speak, and I speak at schools and companies and conferences every single day, and I tell people that unless you'd put it on a billboard next to a huge photograph of your face, your name, the name of the company that you work mm. for, and actually, as it turns out in this case, I suppose your family's names, yeah. your children's names, the names of your children's schools, School, and the business, names of your, yeah. your, your, your wife's business, then, then don't put it online. But also, more than that, don't let it exist in digital format. Because what appears to have happened here is that this video was taken and I call this selfie incrimination. Yeah, I've got a yeah. chapter in my book called selfie incrimination because <laughs> yeah. it's just mad that yeah. you would take this video yourself and sent it to maybe one person. They send it on. And it actually reminds me, Yveka, of the Mabel Janssen case. Do you remember the mm, High Court yes, judge yes. who was in a private Facebook message with one other person, uh, Gillian Scutter, and she said the most horrific things. I mean, beyond racism and yeah, rape culture. Yeah. And Gillian took a screenshot and circulated that for the world to see. And she was suspended. Uh, she was the Judicial Conduct Commission called for her yes. impeachment. She resigned before that happened. Yeah. Yeah. And the overwhelming theme in the media aftermath of that was, but what about her right to privacy? You know, this is a private message it between me and one yeah. other person. And I think that, you know, even if you could establish your privacy right in that respect, which you wouldn't be able to do because the public interest yeah. severely outweighs yeah. any And if this was a WhatsApp right. group, how well, private was that? Yeah, well, I think okay. that's what we also need to tell people yeah. about, is that if you're on a WhatsApp group, uh, as soon as the content's been seen by one other person, so if you and I are speaking to each other, it hasn't been published for the purposes yeah. of our law, yeah. but the second we add a third person third into person. our WhatsApp group, then it's been published and we treat it legally as if it's been published on the front page of the newspaper. Yeah. So it doesn't matter whether three people see it or three million people see it. As soon as one other person has seen it, then the requirement of the publication privacy. has met. Well, let's talk about prosecution. We have all of this, uh, you know, the, the anger and the outrage, and we have government saying that action must be taken. You want to talk about jurisdiction mm. and this being done in Greece and what their laws are, yeah. and of course that this has had an impact here in South Africa. It sounds very blurry. So what would happen? How would and who would who would prosecute? Yeah, I think it is very blurry. So I think firstly, let's establish what crimes have been committed. So I think there's no doubt that the South African Human Rights Commission yeah. will investigate. Um, there were countless complaints laid yesterday by some high profile people, some members of the Charges, general public, yeah. and they are going to prosecute for hate speech and take him to the Equality Court. Now, on the basis of the Vicky Momberg sentence in the Equality Court, uh, she got a, a 100,000 Rand fine mm. in the Equality Court. Um, Penny Sparrow got a 150,000 Rand fine. So that that's almost an independent process through the Human Rights Commission and mm. the Equality Court. From a criminal point of view at the moment, we're seeing charges being laid for crimin and urea, which yeah. is a serious infringement of dignity. Now, a lot of people think that that has to be targeted at a specific person. You know, that I call this person yeah. the K-word, that person goes to lay the complaint. Um, it was used in the Vicky Momberg case, but in the Penny Sparrow case, I don't think there was a specific person targeted in that, yeah, yeah, in that yeah. post, but she was still found guilty for crimin and urea. So I would imagine that cr well, crimin and urea charges have been laid yesterday. Uh, AFRI Forum announced yesterday that if the NPA doesn't prosecute, then they will be bringing a private oh, prosecution. Okay themselves, which I think is very interesting. Um, and I think that the biggest defense that, uh, that he would probably rely on is that the South African court doesn't have jurisdiction, which basically means, do they have the mandate to decide on this thing which happened outside of South Africa's borders? Because South Africa particularly has a very unique relationship with the K-word. You know, yeah. it's a yes. hypersensitive yeah. word yeah. in South Africa and maybe in other countries not so much. Now, for me, the effect of the crime was felt in South Africa. Yeah. So even though it took place in Greece on a beach, the effect happened here because it was published and because of the trans-jurisdictional nature of the internet. And the reference is about South Africa. 100%, Africans. but yeah. I, what I publish here can be seen absolutely everywhere. Yeah. So for me, the, the jurisdiction point won't last. And it reminds me, Yveka, of the... Do you remember years ago there was the Pig's Peak case? And yeah. Pig's Peak was operating an online casino 
based in Swaziland, but there were yes. players in yeah. South Africa. Yes. And what the court said in that case is that, yeah, your servers and the company might be in Swaziland, but the users are in oh, South yeah, Africa. And the, impact and the gambling there. act is not completed until the notification has been given to the user that they have won or lost. Mm -hmm. lost. And the same for me is that the effect of the crimin and urea is felt here within our borders. Well, I wonder how, how, how the Greek government feels about this, seeing as they need all the visitors to come there. And you know whether it will stop people if, if they don't also say something about that. Family responsibility. There's been so much debate about about you know, the unfairness of this to his children, mm. to his wife. Mm. And there's so many questions. I mean, just from dinner table talk, it's like, but surely his wife would know if he uses language mm. like this at home, or mm. surely he's done this at, around the braai, or you know, he's made this not the first time he's used the word, but how do we know? Yeah, well, I, well, I think this for me is the most fascinating uh, development in this case, is that we've had the Penny Sparrows, we've had the Vicky Mumbergs. We know this is not allowed, we know it's criminal. Mm. But for me, what's been so fascinating in this case is the extent to which the family has been brought into it. The school's announcing yesterday that the, that the, parent, the father is not allowed to step mm. foot onto the property. Now, is that going to have an impact for the children? Are they going to be? Because we have seen children being asked to leave schools because of conduct of parents. Yeah. Um, I really hope that doesn't happen because I think that the children are victims mm. in this case mm. and I think that they should, as far as possible, leave, be left out of it. Um, the, the wife has been, there were calls for her to be fired from her company yesterday and that's the first time I've seen that. You know, I was thinking about it to myself yesterday, you know, when Vicky Momberg was in the News. We never spoke about her family. D does she even have a husband? Yeah. I don't even know the You're answer right. to that yeah. question. Were we calling for him to be fired if he even exists? Yeah. You know, is this because it's a it's a man and the woman? I don't know if there's some gender issues here as well. But I think that um, I think that it would be unfair to hold her accountable if she yeah. was standing next to him in yeah. the video. Yeah. If she was complicit in it, knew different story. Yeah. And I think that I'm starting to see social media policies landing up on my desks for, for me to comment on, mm. um, where they are trying to include family members in the policy, in the scope of the policy. So saying, you know, this is what your duties are to the company but bear in mind this also applies to your children and your wife yeah. or your husband and it reminds me there was a case um, with Apple a couple of years ago where a technician uh, was given uh, an engineer was given an iPhone a new generation iPhone which hadn't yet been released to play with for the weekend and his daughter got hold of it and made a YouTube video about it before mm. the iPhone mm. had been ah. released and he was held responsible and he was fired but there was an element of control yeah. there yeah, which just isn't yet. here. Okay well it'll be very interesting to see what happens with the uh, Adam Katsavellos and, and his family mm. of course thanks very much for that insight, uh, Adam, uh, Emma Sadler, not Adam Sadler, Emma Sadler, <laughs> just uh, bringing us up to speed on policy and the rules when it comes to posting such things on social media, just don't do it.